Here's a quick uh, update on my hydroponic system. I've got the tank plumbed and uh, I've got two systems that are going to run off of this sump tank. So you can see that I've got a little Beto bucket set up with my drain pipe running out the bottom and draining into here. And then I've got my pressurized line coming off my pump. And I've set myself up so I'm going to end up teeing in here once things get warm enough and we don't have snow um, in the middle of April. Anyways, this is my lettuce raft. We were going to lettuce rail system, not raft. We were going to have this as a uh, stand-up unit, but I kept struggling with the media drying out, and I planted and the plants died. So what we're going to do with it is... Uh, it's just going to go like this, and it goes pretty good, but these holes are designed to put uh, peat pellets into. So we put peat pellets in here, and some lettuce starts, some seeds, and probably some bare root stock. and end up pulling the, the swamp cooler pad out of a couple of them, and just kind of do some strawberries and lettuce in this setup. And I suspect as I get going in the summer and I get tomatoes going on, the lettuces you know, will probably not be so happy in the summer and we'll just kind of you know trade the system off so I can kind of maximize the hydroponic experiment. I haven't grown um, this way ever before but uh, just a regular tote and I've got a 200 no sorry 400 gallon per hour pump in there and it just feeds in. These are not drip emitters they're just uh, basically little plug-ins with a little piece of uh, uh, tubing cut and then I bungee them on but these will you know can slide forward and lift right out so everything can be worked on and then my drain they're going into a uh, piece of rain gutter and then if you look down here on the bottom there's another rain gutter that you know catches them with a swamp cooler fitting in some garden hose on the bottom so I pretty much made this system so that uh, you could build it out of anything you could find around a house, like a old sprinkler system parts, swamp cooler parts, rain gutter pieces, you know, totes. It's all. I've got locks on mine so just to keep the kids out, you know, keep it safe. Don't want them playing in that fertilizer water or falling in. Anyways, so there's the uh, the hydroponic setup, and uh, you can see the the garden getting snowed on today we'll take a look at what we got going on right here I just I've never grown lettuce or peas or carrots out in the yard and onions and that's the only plant I've ever grown that you can just throw it out and let it do its thing and let it get snow on it and it doesn't kill it you know so it's obviously we've gone through the night with three or four inches of snow on some of this stuff and it it's just solid it just stays so pretty interesting cold weather crop i'm sure it would kill it if we went into a full deep freeze but it does get you know 32 or a little bit under in the nights when we get the weather like this because it's just uh yeah we got pheasants on the block that's what that cackling as they kind of run around here let's go check on the aquaponic system and it seems to be doing pretty good it looks a little cool in there i can tell when it's a lot warmer than the outside because the window's fogged up, but it's probably hanging in there, though. <clears throat> so I've got to see what our temperature is today. We're at 40, oh shoot, 246 degrees. <clears throat> and I've got spinaches coming up. Uh, lettuces, we've just been harvesting leaves off of them, letting them go. These are red leaves, and uh, these are, I believe, butter crunch. Well, I've got butter crunch and red leaf lettuce in here, so got some garlic. My onions are getting tall; they're probably due for a haircut. And strawberries, they're finally starting to flower. I've got some strawberries in here. They're going to have to fight their way up if they want some sunlight with all these lettuces. And so this is what I've been using for my growing experiments. Is we, I broadcast 
into this uh, setup here and then take these little starts and put them in places and try things with them. Then it doesn't cost me a lot of money to have things not make it, kind of like out in the lettuce rail system. But anyways, and I've got a couple peppers I have not planted yet and still under debate whether to put them in here because I've got celery starting to come up. And I got my tomatoes. They're pretty unhappy with this cool weather. And I don't think they like the transplant dirt I put them in. I'm going to have to move them around into something a little bit better than what they're in. But I've, I've got these set up for the Beto buckets. And, you know, we don't always have snow. This time of year we get cold weather, but not like this. So I don't think it's record-breaking. But, you know, the tomatoes want to be in the 50 degree or warmer. Maybe they'll even go in the house tonight just to kind of get them a little happier. They got a transplant and then the weather changed and they just haven't had enough sunlight to kind of do their thing. And the fish, I've got, like I said before, I've got this guy up on here for the, um, keep the algae from growing. Let me unplug that. And I run my pump continuously 24 hours a day. You can see how clean the water stays by doing it that way. And a lot easier to see down in here with this black over reflecting the, the sunlight out. But, you know, we the fish are doing fine. I had a bunch that got ick and we lost them. Uh, you know, I raised them in this medic tank, or medicated them, I should say. And it uh, did pretty good. I lost, I think, 12 out of 24 goldfish due to ick. And I medicated them and showed them in a previous video how I did that. Because I didn't want to treat all the water. So... You know, it's kind of important to not get stuff in your aquaponics system because it can really, um, well, if it says it's not good for human consumption, you really don't want to get it in the system. But I treated the fish and added, you know, a few buddies in there, and they look great. You can tell if your fish ever get it, they get these little, they almost look like white little mini zits on them. It's a cold day, you know. I mean, we've had cold like this for a while. I'm surprised the greenhouse is as warm as it is. But, you know, things are still living. We're just trying to get through till the summer. And then I've been eating off this, too. I give it a haircut every few days, and that's just a lettuce masculine mix. So anyways, there's the setup, and things are hanging on, even with all this cold weather. No heat. You know, we don't heat this. Whatever the sun provides is kind of what we get. And it, you know, you get snow up on the top, and it's got to heat up enough to let the snow run off. So this is probably a three-month type greenhouse. Maybe, th maybe, or sorry, a three-season type greenhouse. And we can stretch it just a little bit more than that. I think this fall we'll, we'll plant lettuces and stuff in here and see if we can get them into maybe even late January. But... So there's the there's the setup and there's how good everything's doing. Uh, pretty pleased with the aquaponics. Not so happy with my dirt mixture and my transplants. They've really struggled, but I'll admit I don't know what I'm doing with the dirt. So that's kind of why I got into the other type of gardening. Anyways, um, good luck gardening. And uh, if you have any tips or comments to help me out, please do. I've been looking for a good way to make a home dirt mixture. You know, something that won't kind of burn the plants and, and keep them nice and healthy. My mixture I put, uh, oh heck, I'm one part perlite, two parts peat moss, and two parts topsoil. And then I put a little bit of fertilizer in it, and maybe it was just too much. But uh, anyways, good luck gardening, and uh, thanks for watching.